Hello and welcome to Jeanette's I'm Every Woman TV. I'm your host, Jeanette Burke. We are live on location at the Royal Ontario Museum for a very special fashion segment featuring the dresses of Christian Dior, now in the 70th anniversary of their first collection. Now, I don't know what you know about Christian Dior, but he revolutionized the fashion industry from 1947 to 1957 and actually changed women's perception of fashion and everything to do with how they wore clothing and bought clothing from that time to this time in a way that has never ever been done before or since. So stay with us because we're going to give you an insider's look into these fabulous dresses and we're going to talk a little bit more about Christian Dior. We're in amongst the spectators here at the ROM for the Christian Dior exhibit. It's coming to a close on April 8th and if you want to see these dresses up close and personal you need to get here before Sunday. April 8th is the last day to see it. We are now looking at Christian Dior's beautiful evening dresses. Again, this is what royalty and movie stars of the time, the biggest ones of the time, wore, including Marilyn Monroe. But we also have, uh, the collection here was actually people who purchased the dresses, women who purchased the dresses, that really owned these dresses and lent them or gave them back to this collection, which is really quite special. In particular, this beautiful pink dress was written, sorry, was worn by a debutante for her coming out afternoon tea party in Florida. And it is just spectacular. We also have, as we walk around, uh, another dress that was given for somebody purchased, her family purchased for her bat mitzvah. And she kept it and she gave it as part of the collection. And we also can see, and I'm going to show you more as I walk around, the uh, detail on the, the fabric. So we're looking at a lot of silk, a lot of buttons, a lot of pinching at the waist and forms uh, to the body. Again, here we see a lot of fairy tale like um, ballroom style gowns that you know were very uh, proper and very fitting gave the beautiful waistline and look at the detail on the fabric because that's something else that Dior was famous for sewing in uh, little embroideries lots of beading beautiful uh, cinching of the waist with the use of belts very unique for the time. Also bows and lots of layering of fabric to give that extra oomph. Here we see an example of the historic pieces that actually influenced Dior's designs. So again, looking back at the old French courts with the corsets and what have you, he brought this back in to an era that we would thought, you know, never would have it again being that prior to this, people were wearing very loose form fitting dresses, drop waist, uh, very boyish cuts, very masculine, nothing that showed the waistline or the bosom. He brought it back. Now, what I love about this piece from Christian Dior's collection is, I don't know if you can see, but there's like a bodice sort of based on a boussier type of thing. There's a vest and then there's like an overlay of crinoline's crinoline skirt, very full skirt. And what is really interesting about this piece, as we can see here, is that it can be worn in multiple ways. So in fact, Christian Dior was the first person to think of multiple uses from one outfit with multiple looks. And I think that that was pretty impressive because obviously we want to get the most for our investment in our clothing. And in this type of thing, you could wear it four or five different ways. And if you were packing it to take it on a trip, you'd have multiple uses. And here again is a classic Christian Dior dress. It's very simple. Notice the simplicity of it. The fabric is wool, it's gorgeous. And you know, a very simple black dress every woman should have in their closet, a simple black dress that will take you from day to night. Again, just a belt with some leather on wool and some gloves, make it a perfect statement piece for a day event. But you could take the belt and gloves off and go straight into the night, put on a pair of pumps, and you're ready to go. Oh, and don't forget the jewelry, maybe some pearls. What I love about this piece, which was obviously a classic summer piece in po polka dot and silk, is that it shows Dior's use of the jacket. And in this case, it's the little jacket. It's the one that, you know, really curves up there, gets you at the waist. And against that flowy, long skirt really looks beautiful the short-waisted jacket.
Now we can see the influence of the mid 50s where money's flowing again, women are pretty much at home and they're taking care of their families. But when it comes to going out at night, whether for a supper club or to the theater or anything of that sort, or even to a fancy event, we see the glossy, sparkly, low hem cocktail dress that made Christian Dior famous. Now women wanted these dresses for every occasion possible, and we can see why. They are very classic pieces that really never go out of style. And look at, look at the detail here. Look at the uh, sparkle fabric. It's just amazing. This piece is absolutely gorgeous as well. Um, what I like is the detail of the bows and particularly you can see right in there the bra is in the dress. So obviously you're going to wear this, you're going to look gorgeous, you're going to have a perfect body in this dress. And just, just the detail, you know, how the eye sees things. He was a master at making the eye see things in a better way for women, which really helped them to gain confidence, to feel beautiful, to look their very best. And again, don't forget that these dresses were uh, donated by Toronto women, but also that Dior sold his designs and made fortunes of money doing it so that they could be mass produced, at a, replicated at a level that was affordable for the masses. This actually was worn by Sophia Loren, uh, designed for her for, I believe, an Academy Award event. And uh, this is absolutely stunning. I mean, it, it, it actually is so gorgeous and made from satin, but yet simple enough that you could actually wear this during the day. So just to clarify, Sophia Loren did not wear, actually wear that last dress. She wore the style of that dress, but she had a black one, not a powder blue. Now we're looking at a beautiful day piece, which kind of has like an overcoat to it. You see how he incorporates coats and jackets actually into the dress wear, with just a simple black um, camisole underneath bringing the coat in to get some of the fabric down of the full skirt, the A-line skirt, uh, on, and, and using the use of tartan, which is pattern. Again, great for the eye to distract. We see another variation over here in the red. And here we have the classic day look of Christian Dior. Very elegant, rare, very fine. And I want to mention again that these pieces are actually donated by Toronto women. And the Toronto women were at the height of fashion even back in the 40s and 50s. I know we think Montreal is the fashion capital for Canada. And it was, and it was certainly a centre of garment industry. Certainly, I hope Renfrew, Montreal was the first to bring Dior to Canada and then bring it to Toronto. But look, we see Toronto women, very stylish, wearing gorgeous dresses and they would be out and about for their lunches, their charity work, or what have you, uh, even to the office if in that time frame some people were working. So now we have some examples of the Dior fragrances that were created. And women ran to get these fragrances, not just because they smelt so good and made them feel confident when wearing it, but look at the bottles. They're just so beautiful. You know, and, and they make women feel like women. And I think that that was what Dior wanted to achieve, not just with his clothes, but with everything he created, from his fragrances to his fashions to his jewelry, which we're now going to take a peek at. So another big part of Dior's business was his jewelry. And as you can see, the jewelry was absolutely outstanding and really uh, good for any time. So Ava Perone, who was uh, an icon in her country, uh, Argentina, don't cry for me, Argentina, built on her, was a big customer and fan of, of uh, Perone, uh, sorry, of Dior, and she loved her jewelry, obviously because a jewelry is a statement piece, and some of Dior's things were based on simplicity, very simple things. We've seen that in some of the dresses. But the jewelry, just adding it, made it pop. And again, you know, a really big proponent of his business and why he was so uh, effective for women is that he gave them that pop. He gave them that idea about accessorizing and really making the outfit. And we see it with the jewelry. We all will soon see it also with, with the shoes and the purses. Real statement pieces. 
And the nice thing is, is that these pieces actually, you know, reflect like feminine images, florals, uh, lilies. And I just had a peek at the current collection for spring uh, for the House of Dior, which is now being run by a female French designer. And if you look at her Le Jardin collection, which is modeled off the Garden of Versailles, now you're probably wondering what an astute businessman Dior was to be able to get this height of success in such a short time. Well, one of the things he was a master at was getting the press on his side, and it started with a article about him in Time magazine. Um, so he was he was very good at getting press releases out and getting the press to follow him wherever he was. And that made him a master at getting big attention that led to big dollars. So equally important to making a woman feel and look elegant for Christian Dior was the use of accessories. And accessories stem beyond jewelry. Here we see the classic Dior purse. Now we know that this look of the square purse with the thing on it has been replicated, but honestly, this is an original and it is stunning and it's all leather. And of course, it went great with the shoes. We also see the square heels, which by the way, have made a resurgence in our spring collection right in the modern time, this year's looks. And also, I couldn't go without saying a, a classic part of Dior and certainly in all the pieces we ever see featured of him, are the gloves, the long gloves for day and night wear. It wouldn't be that you would wear a ball gown without them or that you would go out in the day without one of these proper hats that he always had a hat, including for his wedding collection. That was really some th things that really made him stand out. The long gloves are elegant and I wish they would come back into fashion. They look gorgeous with jackets. They look gorgeous with evening wear. Um, but women, you know, gave up the hats in fashion. Now they're coming back. It's nice to see it make a comeback. And don't forget that other designers have emulated him. Don't forget that people bought his designs to mass produce so that it was affordable. I mean, even this dress here from, from the debutante was actually purchased at a store called Levy's. So it was a store that carried carried uh, his collections but also you know there were other stores that had productions that you know were less money but still made it more affordable for women to have these type of dresses so I'm just going to keep walking around and I want to show you all these fine details okay sorry we're, we're in amongst the uh, there's lots of people coming to see this stuff today and I think if you want to see it too you got to get down here and see it look at look at the details the layering the beading and don't forget this was all hand done because you know at the time uh, machinery was not really used it was just coming into practice but when he did sell his design he was looking for a way to get it more mass produced for what they call the prêt-à-porter or ready to wear lines that were more machine produced but then again it, it changed the value of the dress right so come along we're going to show you also a bridal party dress that uh, was this is the bridal dress it's very famous Christian Dior dress and he did the entire party and you will see here the influence of femininity. Again, uh, using flowers, daisies, the silk, the work, the workmanship up close into the dress and to the materials was absolutely stunning. And to this very day, could never be duplicated. That's what made him such a star amongst royalty and amongst um, the elite. Now, you might not know that when just after the war when paris was trying to get its fashion industry back up and going again um <clears throat> that designers like dior were actually uh doing uh sort of spy work uh with nazis and nazi wives in fact because the Nazi wives were buying the expensive clothing and they were trying to save Paris, which at that time was occupied by the German Nazis. So Christian Dior's sister was part of a resistance movement and he actually got her in a bit of trouble. Uh, she wound up getting captured um, because of him recalling tales from the wives of um, these German soldiers. 
Uh, but he eventually got her released, and he actually designed Miss Dior as a tribute to her for her, all the roles that she had played in it. So that was kind of interesting. Um, and I, I, I want to show you here in these dresses, uh, again, the detail, like to bring a waist back, or this particular piece, which has a Persian influence on it. Look at the colors, look at the satin, look at the... Look at the uh, the belt and the sash, it's amazing. We're going we're gonna to just keep showing you some of these pieces. Um, here again, his details. He's using a stripe, but he put that sash of color right in the middle. And that poppy color brought it back to life. You know, he took something drab and made it fantastic. And we see here in this piece, wow, look at this up close. The detail on this dress, and it's a beautiful blue. It's fantastic, the jewelry work. You can just imagine the time that the uh, seamstress had to put in to get this just right for his collections. And look how well they're preserved. Don't forget, these were actually purchased dresses that were given back to the collection, and they're still preserved. And it's, you know, it's almost 70 years later, and we don't see any stones missing. So that's pretty amazing. Um, look at here, the draping. The draping of the shoulder, the draping of the stomach, hiding the tummy, bringing in the sort of like uh, behind it, the bustle, the, um, that look and the two-tone. It's very um, distracting to the eye to hide the weight and to really give women the perfect silhouette, which again, he's famous for. Here we see something that he created um, from about the mid-50s on, which is the uh, cocktail dress. Now, the cocktail dress is just slightly below the knee, a little bit before the ankle, and you can see how he added lots of fabric to give a woman a small little waistline with a low V-neck. You can see also the use of satin and other fabrics that he actually originally got criticized for because a lot of people after the war felt this was very extravagant. They wanted the change, but they were concerned about the costs. And Christian Dior was a very clever businessman. He knew how to work the press, and he also knew how to get the royals and the high society on his side from his very first collection on. You have to remember, he only started at 41 years old to be a designer. And he only had a 10 year run because unfortunately, while on vacation in Italy, he had a heart attack and died in 1957 at the, like, at the height of his career. But what we're gonna see now is more of the collection. I'm gonna explain the differences and, and how, where he gets his influences and how it really did affect women. I'm also gonna tell you about what a clever businessman he was and how he took uh, an example from Coco Chanel and actually added uh, jewelry and um, purses and shoes and all these things that made for the complete look of a dress um, to add to his collections and he made a lot of money doing that. In fact, at one point, he had more money coming in than anyone else in the Paris fashion industry, which he actually brought back to life. He was over 95% of his profits were coming in from all these different things and he was ruling the fashion world. He had movie stars, he had Jane Mansfield, all these people wearing his dresses, which were the height of the time. And by the way, they bought those dresses because unlike today, they did not have sponsors to put them in on the red carpets in dresses. They had to buy them themselves. So Christian Dior was dominating all of this. And he also did one other thing that many people don't know that changed fashion for women forever. He sold his f designs to mass producers of regular garments, both in New York and other places, that they were able to take those designs and mass produce them and sell them at the retail level to an, at an affordable level so that all women could benefit from this look. That's what made him so successful. Let's look on. So Christian Dior was originally an artist and he had a gallery that failed. But his artistic skills, after he used them in the fashion industry, served him very well. In 1947, he opened 
Christian Dior, Maison de Christian Dior, House of Fashion Christian Dior, and he got funding from a very uh, famous French designer who believed in him. And why was Christian Dior's first collection so inspiring and so revolutionizing? Well, because he started in after the World War II. And during World War II, fashion in Paris, particularly the fashion houses, took a major hit. That's because uh, fabrics were in rare uh, form and skirt lengths had to be lifted up shorter because there wasn't enough fabric to go around. And also women had been wearing clothing that were kind of boyish military style jackets and what have you to get through the war. And they needed something new, something that popped, something refreshing, something that was colorful, something that went beyond pants that they were wearing to work and on bicycles. So what Chris Dior did was he took the lady's body and brought it back. He brought it back to the feminine form. And here we see a good example of it in the evening dress. So he was very inspired by the French nobles and royalty in the 17 and 1800s, particularly Marie Antoinette. And what he did was he put right into the dresses extra fabric, tummy tuckers, corsets, Bosom, a way to pump up the bosom and added a lot more material. And in doing so, he gave the female body form in a way that it hadn't seen in hundreds of years. And it was really actually quite brilliant because as he sewed this into the dresses, they actually were sewn into the dresses, courses and what have you. Today we have to do it with Spanx, but he was pretty clever to put it in. And that's what made him very popular. And again, I want to remind you that these pieces were given into this display by Toronto women who were high fashion. Holt Renfrew has carried Dior for years in Toronto and in Montreal, continues to carry it. You can still find it there. Dior is still strong. And I want to thank you for being with us on this special edition of Jeanette's I'm Every Woman TV, a look at the fashion 70 years of Christian Dior and how he influenced women's fashion and their look about themselves and their thoughts about fashion. And that's really important for me because as many of you know, I grew up in the fashion business and my mother was a makeup artist. So I'm really happy to bring this to you and I hope that you will learn from these things, ways to wear clothing to make you look and feel beautiful. And until next time, continue to be fabulous. This is Jeanette Burke signing off for the Christian Dior exhibit at the Royal Ontario Museum on only until April 8th. So if you haven't seen it, you gotta get down here by Sunday. Thanks for watching. <laughs>